Hello, this is Eve Starr with Eve Starr Fiber Arts, and this is an introduction to beginner crochet, the way I do it, the way that uh, I wish somebody would have taught me. I learned crochet a long time ago from a book. Uh, I was in my early 20s, and I didn't really know anybody who did the kind of crochet I wanted to do. So I got some books, and there were these long directions that went on and on, and it was overwhelming. Uh, things like chain 27, and fourth chain from hook, da da da, and then work, blah blah blah. And no charts, nothing to look at, and it symbols. It was very hard. So when they came out with symbols, that's when I really got into crochet, and I love it. The way it works makes total sense to my brain, and maybe it will to you if you've been having problems uh, learning crochet. The first thing I'm going to show you is this chart. Now, the thing to understand about crochet that I think will clarify it greatly is that it's all about relative height. It's the stitch height, the stitch length, that changes the shape of your work when you're done. You can make something as tiny as this little slip stitch here that is basically flat. You're going through your work and you're just moving your yarn to get it where you want it and then you put your hook in. So you're just making the yarn travel. You're carrying it through to another space, another spot. You're slipping it somewhere else. So it's a slip stitch. This is the abbreviation that you'll see, slista. And then in a chart, it'll or chart with symbols, it'll be a dot. And that tells you put your, your hook there and slip the yarn to the spot. And then in my my drawing I did here, which I know don't laugh, I've got intentional tremor from MS, so I I'm shaky. I'll try not to shake the camera. Um, I made it to where relative heights are what a stitch actually is. All the way from flat to just a little bump, all the way up to a triple crochet, which is that many units high. Okay, I decided that this is like a zero. The slip stitch, is, it's neutral. The chain stitch is like one square high on this graph right here. And uh, it's represented by CH for chain, and then on uh, a chart with symbols, it will look like this squashed oval, and that's one sing that's one chain. Okay, that's drawing your your hook through one time. It's a chain. Now the next thing that's about twice as tall as a chain is a single crochet. On a chart, it's an X, and in this case, it's about twice as tall as that and half as tall as that. The abbreviation is SC. And on a chart, that's what you'll see is an X. You'll know to make one single crochet where you pull the yarn through a loop, you pull it through once more, the two loops that are sitting on the hook. One single crochet. Now, if we go double the height of a single crochet, surprisingly, we have a half double. You'd think we'd jump to a double, but it doesn't work that way. A half double is twice as tall as a single. So I kind of made it this way. And on a chart, it'll just look like a T. And at the bottom of the T is where you put your hook. So your hook goes where the bottom of that T is sitting in, uh, like this V stitch down here. It's the uh, chain from the previous row. You've turned and come back, and that's telling you where to put that stitch. Okay, so that's called an HDC, a half double. I use that one a lot because it's sturdy and it's got a little bit more drama than a single crochet. And it's just got a nice full feel, fills in the space. Okay, if you take another unit, like this is one, this is two, and this is three, this is three stitches tall. This is a double crochet. It's got one line through it, DC for double crochet. And the way this works is, if you think, it, like, you know how at the beginning of a row, on some patterns, it'll say chain three. This counts as first double crochet. That's because that double crochet, if you made one, is about three chains tall. You don't do one at the very beginning of the row usually because it's not as strong as making one, two, three chains. It's elongated loops and they can get kind of floppy. So that's why you don't do it at the beginning of a row. So this is three tall. And then we're, only, we're gonna stop at this one. We're not getting into uh, other ones today. This is a triple crochet. So there's two lines through it because you pull it through twice. And so that is four stitches tall. 
So if you started a, a row and you were going to be making a bunch of triple crochets, they would tell you to chain four, and that's why. Okay, so that is the basic symbols and abbreviations, and of course the relative heights of the simplest stitches. And you'll use these all the time in different combinations. Okay, now over here I have a selection of hooks and different materials and different shapes. Now they're to me, there are two main types of hooks. You've got this kind here that is basically a crook. It's um, a rounded end, as you can see. Let me show you on a bigger one. How about here? Okay, you see how that end is rounded? And it's got a thumb grip, so it's usable. I don't like plastic. I just don't. I know it's lightweight. Some people love it. But it's not living. To me, you know, it's all about wood or bamboo, just because I love the feel of my hands. But I couldn't find this size for a long time without paying a lot of money. So the plastic one was a good bet of three bucks. This is bamboo. And I told you there were two, two basic shapes. The crook I just showed you. And I call this a slot because it's a definite slot. Let me show you the big one. And you'll be able to tell. See how that is just a definite straight slot in there. And what that is good for is multiple yarns, like if you're using three strands at the same time, um, or a yarn like a bamboo or silk that doesn't have scales that make it stick together, and so the, the plies are trying to split apart as you're working with them. This is more likely to catch all of them and keep them where you want them while you're working. So I love this kind of thing. Now, I wanted to get one of these for a while, and only um, craftsmen who were wood turners were making these on Etsy, and I just couldn't afford it. But I found this one not too long ago, and it is by Chow Gu, and it was about $6 with free shipping on eBay. So that's about my, my speed right there. So for me, um, I do have these, you know, kind of with a metal head. This one has a very nice grip on it. I really enjoy that. You can't do some stitches because it only goes this far. You can't do a Tunisian kind of stitch, but it, these are really nice to use. But I wish that the head had that slot shape. It's just a preference, though. And if you're going to end up, you know, working pretty quickly, that'll be just fine. So those are the basics. Um, eventually, when I'm able to, I'm going to have all bamboo with this configuration because look at this. This is the Brittany Birch. It is gorgeous. Uh, the company Brittany made this, and it's a nice slot. I like the head, but all this wood turning down here is a problem for me because it sits in my hand and it bugs me because the way I hold it. Now that brings me to the hold, the handhold. Back in the day, ladies were taught to hold it like a pencil, like this, because it was more dainty looking for some reason, this motion here. But you can get range of motion issues, you can get blisters, it's not as good for your hand as just the knife, butter knife hold, they call it, like this, with overhand grip. I did it this way from the start, so I was okay. Uh, I urge you to, to start that way too, and then do full range of motion in your arms smoothly when you're working. And you see how that, you keep it loose and relaxed in your hand. You're not doing the death grip on anything. And I recommend doing it that way. Now, another thing that's good to know is that there's certain markers that work really well for crochet. First of all, you can use this to, to count your rows or rounds if you're worried about it. Uh, it takes a while before you, you know what you're looking at with your finished fabric, so this is a good thing to have. Um, this here, of course, are, these are paper clips, and with crochet, it's not like knitting where you put a marker on the needle to show you where it is. Instead, you actually put the marker into the stitch. So on a larger gauge uh, project, maybe something like this, this paper clip here, these two are, okay, something like that, slides on till you need it, slide it out. Um, you've got this kind of paper clip, if, it, if it's not too... If it's not something that will snag. Sometimes in a pinch, I'll take one of these out of my hair, stick it on in there, and it marks it fine. And then there's another one. So there's also um, stitch markers that look like little plastic safety pins that work well too. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is the kind of yarn we're using for our first class. And that is what's called a worsted weight. 
Now, the Craft Yarn Council of America came up with a number system so that they could tell you at a glance how thick the yarn is that you're going to use. It's not perfect, but it works. And so this right here is about a number four to five, which is considered heavy worsted or chunky. Oh, there's that other st stitch marker. It was buried. Hang on. That's the, the little safety pin kind. Okay, this is another tube yarn like I showed you in my last video. And what I want you to find when you're practicing with me is something that stretches. Because no matter how hard you try, when you're new, you do do the death grip. And so you want something to where if your tension's a little too tight, you could still get the hook through without too much trouble. This one too, it, it's your basic um, acrylic yarn that you can find at Walmart or anywhere else. It makes just fine practice yarn. This is like a light worsted or a DK, they call it, to number three on the scale. The scale goes from zero to six. Zero being really thin lace yarn, and then um, six being super chunky, real thick. So this is about a three to four. And it has a natural stretch in it too, because it has a little bit of wool in it. And the way that they treat the acrylic, it can be a little bouncy too. So that's what I want you to find. And I want you to find something that will give you large enough stitches to where when we, we show you the anatomy of a stitch, you know what you're looking at. Because that's the biggest hang-up people have with crochet is they don't know where to put the hook. They don't know where they are. They count up their stitches at the end and they lost them. They don't know where they went. And so there are ways to, to prevent that and keep it from happening. So I think I'm going to wrap up now because I didn't want to go on too long for you. So there you go. When we do the stitches in the next uh, video, I'll have a cameraman that'll help. And I urge you to pause it whenever you need to and run it back because that way you can really get a good idea of what we're doing without any stress. Please leave me comments, questions down below. I'm really happy to do, answer those for you. And please subscribe to the channel. That helps me out and it also helps you to get first dibs and a notification when we're going to have the next class. So we're looking forward to, to playing with yarn with you guys. Bye-bye.